Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be talking about something for respiratory therapists and nurses. I'm gonna be talking about breath sounds and understanding them. So stick around to find out more. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Daniel from Doldier Media, and today I'm gonna to be talking about understanding breath sounds. Now, if you're not a respiratory therapist or a nurse or in the medical field, yes, there are different breath sounds. Now, these aren't sounds that you make with your breath, but it's what we in the medical field call the sounds that we hear with the stethoscope when we listen to people's lungs. And there's a lot of differences as to how people interpret certain breath sounds, and I think I'm gonna to try to clarify from my understanding how each breath sound sounds and what it kind of means and indicates. Now, if you're new to the medical field, this is going to become a common issue in terms of how you name certain sounds. In a shift, I can have the same patient with the same exact sounding lungs have five different ways of, that people chart what they think those sounds are. We're going to clarify how each sound actually sounds so that we have a little bit more consistent interpretation of breath sounds. Before we get into it, my first advice that I would give you is stay consistent with how you interpret breath sounds. On most charting systems, uh, we use Epic in my hospital. Uh, some hospitals have not switched over to Epic yet, but for the most part, everybody is on Epic. I see a lot of discrepancies in terms of how breath sounds are written, even in the same shift by the same therapist. Now, naturally, breath sounds do change. If they're congested, you might cough and it might clear up a little bit. But for the most part, you should stay consistent with how you interpret sounds. An example of this would be this. Me personally, if I'm charting somebody's lungs and I hear a very diminished sound with a little bit of a rumble, I'm gonna put diminished, then I'm gonna put dash coarse. Now for me, that tells me that I had a very hard time hearing the lungs, but I could still hear a little bit of a rumble. If I hear more of a rumble, but it's slightly diminished, I'll put coarse dash diminished and if I can't hear anything I'll either put diminished or absent I'm always consistently charting the same on every single sound I hear like that so that if I go back a year from now and I see somebody's chart I know exactly what I meant when I wrote that now I'm not trying to say anything negative is gonna happen to you but there's always a chance that we can get sued there's always a chance that our charting will later be questioned or audited and we should be consistent with what we're writing I personally have seen a lot of people write clear course and I have no clue what that means so hopefully today we can clarify and strengthen things out a little bit. Now the first breath sound that we're going to talk about is wheezing. I'm going to talk about what how we should treat wheezing, also how it sounds. This audio clip right here is exactly what wheezing sounds like. This audio clip is mostly an expiratory wheeze, and inspiratory wheeze is gonna be that same thing, but on inspiration. If you hear that sound, that means that the patient is wheezing, and most likely they'll benefit from either an albuterol or some kind of bronchodilator. With that sound though, it also goes along with what kind of disease process they have. If the patient's asthmatic or has COPD, they'll also benefit from medications like magnesium or maybe even steroids. All of these medications work together to help open up the bronchioles and the bronchi for them to actually be able to get a full breath without any kind of obstruction or any kind of constriction. Now, just because you're hearing a wheeze, that doesn't necessarily mean that they absolutely need a breathing treatment. If the patient's not in any respiratory distress, they could just be chronically wheezing. A lot of COPD patients are always wheezing. And so if you're going to give them a treatment every time they're wheezing, they're probably going to have a heart attack from the amount of albuterol you're giving them. So wheezing is pretty simple. It's a very common one. Now, one thing that I've seen in my experience is that a lot of people we hear an audible wheeze without even using a stethoscope. They're going to try to say that the patient needs an albuterol treatment or something else. Now, for the most part, if they have an audible wheeze, that's not necessarily that they actually have a, a wheeze in their bronchiole or their bronchi. So an albuterol won't help in that situation. If you hear an audible wheeze, it might be due to the cold air and those patients probably need a corticosteroid. A corticosteroid is an inhaler that's used for maintenance and it helps with upper airway inflammation. And so if you're hearing an audible wheeze, I would follow up with trying to listen with a stethoscope and seeing if you still hear the same wheeze. Now, sometimes you could hear the audible wheeze through the stethoscope, but don't be deceived. That's most likely not gonna be an actual wheeze and albuterol won't necessarily help in that situation. Now, with that being said, I'm gonna add an Amazon link to a stethoscope that I use. I do recommend having a pretty good quality stethoscope. You definitely don't need anything for two to $300. 
but something just under $100 will do. You don't want a small one, and honestly, the hospital given ones for sanitary purposes, the ones that are disposable, they suck. Uh, you could barely hear anything with those. It's almost like a kid's toy. So I recommend getting the one that I'm adding in my Amazon link. The link's down below in the comments. So my next breath sound that I'm gonna explain is coarse crackles. Now the audio clip is right here. And as you could tell, it sounds like the patient is drowning. Now, of course, crackles, and this is gonna be the way I chart. This isn't necessarily gonna be a way that the textbook or some kind of old software you're using is explaining it. Of course, crackles in my charting, I stay consistent. And for me, it's usually fluid overload in a CHF patient or any kind of pulmonary edema. So it sounds a little bit more wet when I write coarse crackles. That's what that means to me. So a year down the road, if I see that I put coarse crackles, so for me, it's not as much much of a viscous sounding coarseness. It's a little bit more watery, a little bit more runny, and it does sound like the patient's drowning. Now in a CHF patient, you honestly could even hear this without a stethoscope sometimes. If they're that bad, they definitely need some kind of diuretic or maybe some kind of dialysis or something to get the water out of their lungs. Their third spacing, we're not gonna get into actually what third spacing is in this video. This sound, if you do hear it, and if it sounds a little bit more wet, it's most likely pulmonary edema. And the best way to get that off board is with some kind of diuretics and if the diuretics aren't helping and the person's in distress then they need to be on a BiPAP or a CPAP so we could push that fluid out of their lungs back into their circulation. Now with coarse crackles being mentioned the next one's going to be coarse breath sounds or ronchi. I'm going to explain what that means. Now ronchi is a very old term. Honestly it's a very dated respiratory term and um, a lot of nurses and respiratory therapists that have been around for a while they like to still use ronchi. But there's not really any clear, consistent definition to ronchi. I'll tell you guys how I interpret ronchi to sound like. In my charting, this is usually what I stick to. When I've talked to certain therapists that I work with, they usually are pretty agreeable that that's it, that is what ronchi is. With all the words that I just said, ronchi for me is when the secretions that the patient has are in their upper airways or they're almost getting ready to leave. So again, ronchi is not a common term you'll hear. Some charting systems don't even have ronchi, but ronchi to me is when they have some kind of phlegm, secretion, some kind of mucus in their lungs, and it's in the upper airways, it's already on its way out of the patient. You hear a very loud rumble. It's almost like one cough, and all of that's gonna come up. So if you hear ronchi, if you see somebody charting ronchi, they need some kind of bronchial hygiene therapy. So in those situations, they typically need like a metaneb or a cough assist, or something as simple as an acapella will do. Even if you don't wanna get any kind of medications or anything on board, in terms of therapies, you could just have them do deep coughs or have them try to cough as, as much as they can to get that stuff out. Now with ronchi kind of out of the way, coarse is the next one. Coarse kind of covers a multitude of things. When you put coarse on a patient, it's just a loud rumble that you hear, but it's not necessarily at the upper airways, it's a little bit more distant. The audio clip is gonna be like this. So of course you'll usually hear in a patient that has pneumonia. If it's a specific lobe that has pneumonia, you'll only hear it on that side. Sometimes the patient might just have a really difficult time clearing secretions and you're definitely hear, you're gonna hear coarse. This is usually managed with antibiotics. If they're having trouble breathing, if they're having bad ABGs, then definitely they need some kind of bronchial hygiene on board. Honestly, even a little bit of hyperinflation with an IS is gonna do a lot of good for them. Them being able to take deep breaths is also gonna help them cough stronger and better. This patient is having a difficult time clearing their secretions or they just might be producing so many secretions that they just can't get cleared in time. So again, a lot of fluids, a lot of antibiotics, and the patient needs some kind of bronchial hygiene therapy, like an IPPV or some kind of device that helps get that stuff out and having them cough it out. I hope so far these are helping you out. Let me know down in the comments if you interpret any of these differently. The next one's gonna be fine crackles. Now fine crackles are this sound right here. I did a really bad job of trying to imitate the sound of fine crackles. The best way I can actually describe it would be if you're trying to breathe and it sounds like there's a little bit of tears in your lungs. Usually fine crackles is associated with some kind of fibrosis, some kind of interstitial lung disease, and in cystic fibrosis. 
Now, cystic fibrosis is the unique one that you will hear this because it imitates scarred lungs, but it, overall cystic fibrosis is an obstructive disease and you need some kind of albuterol for that. But if you do hear fine crackles, then either they're having very faint secretions and very dry secretions, that does happen sometimes. Sometimes you might hear popping sounds, which will be a little bit more atelectasis, and when they're taking a deep breath for you, you'll hear a little bit of pops. For the most part, if you do hear a Velcro sounding noise, which we call fine crackles because of the very, <laughs> We call fine crackles fine because of the fine sound they make as opposed to coarse. If you hear fine crackles, the patient most likely has some kind of uh, pulmonary fibrosis. They have some damage in their lungs and they're going to have a hard time breathing in. So these people usually have a hard time with oxygenation. They have a hard time taking a deep breath in. And a lot of times they'll have a higher respiratory rate. Now, those are things that are kind of expected. So you shouldn't be too concerned if you see them breathing like 20 breaths a minute. Normally, that would be a little bit more alarming. But in a patient that has ILD or if a patient has some kind of pulmonary fibrosis, it's kind of their norm. So this patient most likely is going to be on home oxygen if it's pretty bad. If it's not pretty bad, uh, you can manage it with some kind of IS or some kind of hyperinflation therapy. Their lungs are usually more rigid and what you're hearing is collagen fibers and certain different fibers that have been healing the lungs that have been getting torn over time and you're hearing those little tears again. That's kind of what you're hearing. So in those lungs, in those situations, there's not really much you could do. Unfortunately, this is one of those disease processes that can't really be reversed. And if it gets pretty bad, they're gonna either need a lung transplant or the patient might end up dying. It's gonna be very difficult ventilating this patient and oxygenating this patient because their lung capacity is not as great as somebody that has normal healthy lungs. And finally, I wanna talk about diminished breath sounds. Now, diminished is something that's used in the healthcare field a little bit abusively, I would say, but for the most part, it's a very common thing to hear. There's a high chance that you're gonna hear diminished your first few times you hear breath sounds, and if a patient comes in from the ER, you're most likely not really gonna hear breath sounds. So diminished tells you a few things. If you do not hear air movement, and the patient is in some kind of distress, then that means their airways are completely closed up. Earlier, we talked about wheezing. Wheezing is a harmonica sound that has a narrowing bronchiole or bronchi that's making uh, a sound when the air passes through it. In diminished, sometimes there is no movement of air at all. Now, if they're extremely diminished or absent breath sounds, then you should be very worried if that's accompanied with respiratory distress. It's probably gonna be an asthmatic patient. It could be a pediatric asthmatic patient or an adult that has a COPD exacerbation. But if you're not hearing any air movement and that's accompanied with any form of respiratory distress, they need a lot of intervention. That's gonna be from continuous breathing treatments to multiple breathing treatments, magnesium, steroids, BiPAP, maybe even intubation. So if you work in an emergent setting or if you're working on the floor somewhere and all of a sudden you heard breath sounds and no longer do you hear them, then you need to escalate that. That's something that needs to be addressed pretty quickly. Now with that being said, for the most part, everybody who has COPD is gonna be a little bit diminished. And a lot of patients that are overweight are also going to be diminished. It's going to be very difficult to hear breath sounds when there's a lot of tissue over the patient's lungs. Or it's going to be very difficult when they have a disease process like COPD, uh, as we see in emphysema or chronic bronchitis. When your patient has those disease processes and you're listening to their lungs, it's going to be very difficult to hear the lungs. So try to take a deep breath. Focus on what you're listening to. What I usually do is if I'm having a hard time with a diminished breath sound, I'll usually take about two or three breaths for me to really finalize what I would call that breath sound. It does take a little bit longer with a diminished breath sound because that could be diminished expiratory wheeze. It could be a diminished wheeze. Uh, inspiratory wheeze. It could be a diminished core sound. And all of these need further and different treatments. They're all a variety of diseases. But because it's just diminished, and if all you hear is just a very faint sound and you just kind of walk away, you could be ignoring a potentially uh, life-threatening thing that's going on with the patient. And like I said, if it's a COPD ear that's always diminished, I have a system where I'll put, what do I hear first? And if I hear coarse first, 
then the wheeze, I'll put coarse expiratory wheeze or coarse inspiratory wheeze. But for the most part, these are some basic breath sounds that I think are going to help you a lot. If you're just starting in respiratory, this is going to, it's going to help you out a lot. If you're in the nursing field, talk to your coworkers and see what everybody else writes for a ronchi or for a strider, which strider is uh, when the upper airway is so closed up, it sounds like a whistle. I didn't really talk about it because it's not that common. Um, you'll only see that it usually in emergent situations or with some kind of anaphylactic reaction. But like I said, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel. Stick around next week. I'm going to have another respiratory video. Thank you.